Schramsberg produces the best sparkling wine in California. End of story. It all began when Jakob Schramm left Germany and became one of the pioneers of winemaking in the Napa Valley. Indeed, the very first winemakers in Napa were all European immigrants, mainly from Germany and Italy. Many of them had grown up in winemaking families and they knew that hillsides could produce some of the very finest wines. Over the years, Jakob Schramm became a successful vintner, garnering recognition and winning a loyal clientele for his wines. He built a labyrinth of underground cellars and a beautiful Victorian mansion, hallmarks of the property today. But when Prohibition struck, the business closed and it wasn't until 1965 when the doors would finally reopen. My parents, Jack and Jamie Davies, came to Napa Valley in 1965, and they would revive the Schramsburg property. Uh, their focus was to make a world-class sparkling wine in California. Up until that time, no one had used Chardonnay or Pinot Noir, so the classic uh, two French Champagne varieties. And so their thought was there was a niche, there was an opportunity, and if they were to to make that, that step, to use those varietals, to go through the, the classic bottle fermented process, they would make extraordinary sparkling wine here. Mind you, there was very little Chardonnay or Pinot Noir grown in California to begin with. We think of 100 acres of Chardonnay, something like that in 1965. Today in California, 100,000 acres. That's probably the single biggest difference between what life was like then and what it is like now. The Davies spent time in France studying at the top champagne houses and then brought their knowledge back to California. Gradually, they built a reputation as the producers of the best sparkling wine in America, which was formally recognized at a landmark historical event. U.S. President Richard Nixon uh, visited uh, China in February of 72, and he was the first American leader to ever go to China. My parents did not know when it happened that it was going to happen, but they had delivered 13 cases of Blanc de Blanc to an Air Force base out here uh, near Sacramento. And uh, three weeks later, they found out uh, from a friend who was watching the Today Show one morning, turn on the television, Jack and Jamie, Barbara Walters has just explained that the Shramsburg Blanc de Blanc uh, was served uh, in Beijing, China by President Nixon to Chow and Lai. Big deal. Six months later, the, the knock on the door comes from the nice people from Mudge and down. Hello, Mr. Davies and Mrs. Davies. You make a wonderful product uh, and we would like to buy your winery. And so uh, my parents were definitely not interested in selling, but uh, very uh, shortly thereafter, some in that next year, 73 Domaine Chandon started. The toast to peace in China, as it was so called, catapulted the sales of Schramsburg. A prestige brand was born, and the wine has been served at the White House over a hundred times since then. But this historic event also helped attract the attention of the Champenois, who understood that California had the terroirs to produce exceptional quality sparkling wine. No doubt, the beautiful cellars at Schramsburg reminded the French of their own underground cellars, which are the ideal conditions to store wine due to the consistently cool temperatures year round. For all of the hard work and success of the Davies family at Schramsburg, people sometimes wonder whether or not California can actually produce better sparkling wine than champagne. There have been many occasions when this was put to the test. One such moment was uh, oh, three or four years ago when we had, uh, I believe it was 22 masters of wine here in Napa Valley and uh, a blind tasting was staged. Uh, MWs are pretty educated folks, of course, and their, their palate should be quite uh, sophisticated. But a blind tasting was staged with six uh, French champagnes and six uh, of the best made here in California, uh, sparkling wines. And when, when the, uh, the, the ballots were cast, uh, the favorite wine was actually the 1999 Jay Schramm, so a couple of vintages older than this one. That was pretty exciting. 
The French champagnes are the, the benchmarks, of course, of quality. You know, people assume that, oh, French champagne's gotta be great. Uh, I kid them, though, that we may have a better place to grow the fruit here. You know, typically we're picking the fruit a little bit riper than they would in champagne. There's no chapitalizing, so we'll never add sugar to the, to the base juice. Uh, we start out with plenty of acidity, often a bit more than you would have in champagne. So it's, 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 uh, I feel very fortunate, very lucky. Uh, I didn't start it here, my parents did, but I'm happy to be able to continue on with what they started.